Daryl, first of all, lots of games are looking like or either have been called off due to, to COVID and outbreaks in squads. I know you can't go into specifics here, but let's say hypothetically something comes along where you get an outbreak or a case. What's the plan from, from the club's perspective? We're just trying to do our best as a football club. We're in the mass around the place and the world's a, world's a strange old place again, isn't it? At the minute it feels that way. We're professional. We're trying to be as professional as we possibly can. I think it's a bit of Mission Impossible, if I'm honest with you, with, with how quick it's spreading. And, you know, we, we when we come... No, inevitably we come and do face situations where we might be a bit tested we, we'll just follow the protocols that are in place you can never really stop it though can you we've seen it in every walk of life you can't really 100% safeguard against no it. you can't and uh, it's, a, it's a real tough juggling act because uh, you know and no doubt that there's a lot of people that lost family members to Covid isn't it and it's and it's a difficult world but then we've, we've also got to understand that life can't keep stopping <sighs> Because then you've got other other problems that come in on, on, on mental illness and and uh, people uh, getting themselves very down. So it's it's a tough it's a tough situation at the minute. We as a football club, we're just trying to do our best to try and limit that as much as possible. But within reason, you know, we've got to live, haven't we, as well? So yeah, we'll we'll see what see what happens and uh, we'll follow whatever needs to be followed. There's a possibility that fans might either be restricted in numbers or might not be able to come in at all, which given how supportive they've been this year as well would be massive if they, they have to be played behind closed doors again, the matches. Yeah, uh, but we can't we can't keep going. Like I said, you know, we can't keep surviving by shutting everything down. It's people's livelihoods, businesses. You know, the, it's going to then come on top of it that, that people will be, you know, Dying of different causes, and depression will be one of them because you've got to put food on the table. You know, it's it's a release for people to come and watch football. It's out in the open. I think it's been proven that the, the cases are that when they're outside, they they know when they're as infectious as being inside a building. So I, I see no reason why football can't continue with the the COVID passes and the uh, you know the lateral flow test if if and when you need to to get into stadiums. Let's talk a bit more generally about other stuff then. Um, a lengthy injury list, we've already talked about that. Um, just talk us about your personal experience of this because have you ever come across it, the fact you've got five centre-forwards injured and you're playing midfielders and wingers up front? In your experience as a manager, have you ever come across this type of thing before? It's a new one for me. And don't get me wrong with it, but like I said on Saturday, the course of games, you'd expect a few injuries. You really would. A couple of those have been contact injuries, and which you can't do anything about anyway. But you certainly won't all expect them to be at the top end of the pitch. But we, we're working very hard, like I keep saying, as staff to look for solutions. It's it's been uh, it's been good to have a week to recharge the boys for a couple of days, then back on the training ground to to work different attacking patterns and different attacking plans, which which is obviously limited without the the use of a, a top end of the pitch players. But there's also ways to skin out skin a cat. I think the players deserve a massive plaudits and pat on the back to to go through these runs, missing our best players and and uh, players that were fly, flying at the start of the season to keep to still be third in the in the division, and we want to keep chipping away and keep chipping away at our points total to eventually, hopefully, we can bring in some reinforcements and, and one or two players coming back in January. And those reinforcements, I know you're not going to give the game away about who or what you're after, but have your priorities perhaps changed for the window, given the injuries in that particular part of the pitch? We've got, a, I believe, a fantastic recruitment model now at the club uh, with, uh, with David Flickcroft and Tommy Johnson. And, and the recruitment side of things are never moving vehicle. We, we were freshening up in the window, and I like to freshen up every window with our wholesale changes. But obviously, with the, the the injuries we've got to the front line, that becomes a, a necessity to, to get that, and hopefully getting one or two back as well, because we don't want to be short in area, any area of the pitch. So uh, a lot of work going off in the background. It's, it's not an easy window. There never are easy windows because a lot of top centre forwards are, or centre forwards are in other people's teams. So, but we we have people in place like Flickers and like like Tommy that are, that are working hard to to give me a list of names and and trying to press the button for the right ones at the right time when the window does open. And how difficult is it to get the right type of player? Because you you could just get numbers, but I, you won't want that, will you? You want somebody who's actually going to improve it or or, or supplement the team. 
No, you, you, you work very hard. I work very hard with a recruitment team to get the balance of the squad actually right. You know, you look at our centre forward options with the lads fit, they give me all different various options of, of the positions they play at the top end of the pitch. You know, you've got George Lloyd lives on the shoulder, lives on the last man. You've got Proctor, big presence, physical presence, hold the ball up well, technically good at attacking crosses. You've got Wilson's link up play, finishing and ability, you know, you've you know, the balance of your strike force is, is very key. And uh, we're obviously missing one or two of those key ingredients at the top end that we need to strengthen in, in the window to give us maybe one or two more options while the other boys come back. And just finally then, looking at, at Exeter, it's easy to forget that there's a game at the end of all this as well. What are you expecting from them and what type of team are you expecting to run up against? They've been a consistently a top seven League Two team, haven't they, for, for many years now when they've dipped in League One, dipped in League Two. Uh, I like the manager, Matty Taylor, I think he's a talented manager. Uh, I think he's doing a cracking job there. The, the, the players they breed through their system, it's, it's in a fantastic academy they've got there. So it's a lot of credit goes to, to Exeter as a football club and, and, you know, a dangerous team. But they've got one or two injuries themselves. We've got one or two injuries, so we'll be, be looking to attack the game to, to try and win the game and give them the respect they deserve. But also know that points are crucial and uh, we want to get as many as possible starting again on Saturday.